<laughs> hello, hello. Here we are. It's, it's becoming. Hi, everybody. How are you? Late. Ten minutes late. It's, it's just becoming. We are a thing. back, and it was my fault for being late because I decided that I had to run upstairs and have a shave because I look like Father Christmas. <laughs> I don't have that problem. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> I might have that problem when I'm a bit older. I've got one witchy hair that grows out that the kids call a witchy hair and they will fight over it to pluck it. <laughs> anyway, here we are again. Oh, feels like Groundhog Day, doesn't it? I I, I was a bit late get going and doing the little live on the HM page and I did it through StreamYard. So I thought, oh, I'll do it through there. And um, as I was doing it, I felt like I was in the middle of the live. I almost got carried away. And then I was like, oh, God, no, not what am I doing? And then and then <laughs> here I am again, like 40 minutes later. And, I, and I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> how long will we keep it up? Somebody messaged me and said, and what did they say? You're, oh, I can't remember, but it was something about, you know, don't burn out. Yeah, you're always online and you're always working. And yes, uh, every time that I look for you, the green light is on Messenger or Facebook. <clears throat> Even yeah. at three o'clock in the morning. Do you know what time I went to bed last night? Well, it must have been very early hours of the morning because I couldn't find the quad keys to feed the horses this morning and I wasn't going to wake you. So I reckon it was probably gone six o'clock this morning. Half past six. Half past six. And I'm not yes, proud me. of it. Don't, don't, I just did a whole night shift, basically. I was up again at 12, I think. Anyway, oh, sorry, we're just having a quiet little conversation between ourselves. Hello, we're just waiting for you to turn up. Time for school. Who's that? Uh, I'm just uh, refreshing the page. And I, Hi, I Libby. Hi, Libby. Elizabeth Pastula, hello. Angela's here. Hi, hi, hi. Jenny's here. Look after yourself. We all need you. Yes. <laughs> Anybody fancy taking over then? Alicia Howard is the time for school. Oh. Hiya. <laughs> hello. Um, uh, um, just finished the track in time to catch day 14. Well, wow, brilliant, Danielle. Fabulous. Well done. Hello from Sweden. Hello. Sandra's here in Czech. Who was from um, Sweden? Pia says, because I know you will be in Finland someday, my personal challenge is to teach you some Finnish. So we do this again. Okay. <laughs> and, right. Well, you've got to tell us if we're pronouncing it right. Heiva <laughs> Ilta. Hi, Valta. Hi, Valta. Do I say it with a bit of an accent as well? I, I suddenly feel like I'm fluent. I, see a, I see a foreign name and then I skip over it. Yeah, <laughs> did brave. I say that right? Um, Vivian's here. Hi, Charlotte's back. Hey, I don't know how you carry on so intensely. I tried to fight against the horrors in the NHS and cuts and gave up after five years because I wasn't getting anywhere with the... I know. I remember. I remember all of that and I remember you you fighting and have you seen um what's he called um David somebody in Cornwall who is that this is just having a private conversation between me and Charlotte now about the NHS I follow him and wow he's being taken to court and everything just because he's fighting for what what he believes in and and it's difficult isn't it yeah I don't know. I Charlotte, who knows? You know I've been on this train for a very, 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 very long time because you've known me from way back. And uh, and Gary, of course, is with me now. And we have so many great people behind us now. And you guys are here now. Now it feels like we're speeding up. Now it feels like somebody said to me when they messaged me today, because we're getting so many messages all the time, um, trying to work through everything. And a lady said, you know, this is a crusade. And it does feel like a crusade. It really, really does. But I'm well aware that if we don't, if we don't do it right, it, it could fall. So we've we've spent a long time laying the foundations of this. We've we've sent we spent a long time sowing the seeds of this. And now we feel that we're getting to the point where it, we are able to come 
to go out. It's pioneering stuff. I mean, right at this moment in time, we are, Gary and I, are currently helping, um, well, Gary, one of them, and me, both of them, we're currently helping uh, two horses who have P3 penetration and are rehabbing, but they're in their very early days. So it's a lot of support, a lot of support for the owners, a lot of help. Once we get over this hump of this next few day next few weeks then they'll get they'll be able to from what they've learned they'll be able to go further and my god i tell you it doesn't half galvanize you when you're an owner when it's gone this far and the and p3 is penetrating and the world is saying put your horse to sleep and we're saying no because that's that's not laminitis now we're now in the realms of incorrect hoof care we just got to fix it. We'll, we'll worry about all of that later, but we've got to just fix it. We'll worry about all the diet and the management. We'll get that right now. You can be concentrating on that, but what we need to do, and this is pioneering stuff, and we have to do it behind closed doors. We have to do this behind closed doors. We can't tell you where these horses are. We can't tell you anything about it. All we can tell you are the results of it a bit, a bit further on down the line. We can't even have x-rays as we go through at the moment because there's nobody who is trustworthy enough around where we are or around these animals that we're treating right now, and they could be anywhere in the world, who is trustworthy enough to come along and x-ray and understand what they're doing. So uh, just, just before I came on live tonight, uh, one of our HMB pros uh, we've put another lady in touch with one of our HMB pros and she's got a mini Shetland and the vet, she's, she's got very, very high heels and she's got rotated pedal bones, right? So what's just caused that? Incorrect hoof care. And yet the vet came along and said, take more toe off and leave the heels alone in case she's got contracted tendons. And you're like, where are you? Are you seeing something different to what I'm seeing? Because Aren't you seeing the horse walking around on the tip of their pedal bone? What is more important to the horse, right? A little bit of mild, and I have to say it's mild discomfort in the back of the foot where the, the soft tissues ache a little bit. Although I have to tell you, we the relief from not walking around on the tip of P3 is palpable with these animals. Um, a little bit of that compared to, which is, is totally able to get over and reversible to irreversible bone damage which you've been in the group long enough now you know it right you've seen it you've seen it for your own eyes you guys many guys many of you were kind of and this is not and through any fault of anybody but you're cosseted in a way in your own little world until you actually start to see the big picture like we've been seeing for years, and then you go, holy hell. What was the vet thinking? To turn around to that owner and go, no, leave the heels and just um, don't do that. Take the toes off. I mean, this is why we do this. A yet again, yet again, another one and another one and another one. And the two horses that we're dealing with at the moment aren't minis. These are these are biggies and, and uh, you know, these are big animals, large animals, large horses, and they're both having to deal with P3 rotation and penetration. Guess what? In the front feet. And, it, and it's, not it's in the hinds. not in the hinds. And of course, I wonder feet, why like, that is. Yeah, I wonder why that is. <clears throat> um, um, uh, Catherine says, hello from Australia. It's a beautiful morning. We are finally getting some rain tonight. Life is good. Okay. Pia says, I got close. Good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Susan's here. Hi, Susan. Charlotte says, you fight so hard for the horses and get told the same wrong things aggressively by the same type of people on your HM page. I'd have fought them all by now and been struck off Facebook. Well, Facebook's got this marvelous feature, you see ban them block them and ban them that's what we've been doing <laughs> for a long time if anybody comes on if, if they come on and they're just like oh you know i don't understand why you're not you you do this and i and i want to know more but a bit prickly then we let them stay 
But if they're just going to come on and say nasty things or just go, you're idiots or you don't know what you're doing or it's all rubbish and nonsense and all of that, then we just remove them because we don't need them in our lives. It's bad energy and we get rid. And that actually is the same in the Phoenix group because we want this group to be a very uh, contained group. I don't mean contained as in the number of numbers, but I mean contained in the fact that we don't want people coming in who have been in that traditional world constantly or still wrapped up in it, coming in and going, oh, but this doesn't work, who've rehabbed, you know, precisely one horse or more than or more you know but less than 10 we've done thousands and we've done many 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 uh that have been that have been rotated i mean hundreds and hundreds so we know what we're talking about and we know why it why it works because we are simply being actually the least invasive of all hoof care professionals on this planet. We are the least invasive. It's the least invasive and also the most evidence-based. Oh, yes. Where's all theirs, case study? Where's all their evidence-based that stick them in a box, sticking heart bar shoes on, chopping the toes off and leaving the heels high? Where's their success rate? Where is that documentation? Where are, is where are those results? I mean, it's all very well, we, isn't it? Where we we've got, got sorry, them all. Go on. yeah, we've yes, got them all. it's all very we've well. All. It's all very well being quite well known on Facebook and turning up and going, "Oh, that's wrong and that's terrible, and you shouldn't do that, and you shouldn't say this, and we do it this way." Okay, put your money where your mouth is, and let's see a bunch of rehab cases where they've been rotated and penetrating and you have rehabbed them the same as us or not the same as us, your way. And let's see your results. Put it all over Facebook like we do. Why aren't they doing that? Mm. Gary wonders, don't you, Gary? Why aren't they doing that? Oh, why aren't they doing that? They, they hammer us. They, they say that we're tree huggers, nutcases, naturalists. I suppose you could say that that is natural um, is, is part of it. Mm. I'm not going to take my clothes off, don't worry. <laughs> Stop <laughs> doing naked life. <laughs> Nobody needs to see that, honestly. <laughs> and my wife's in the background saying definitely they don't. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 yeah, we honestly, we show you the ugly bits of rehab and and how rehab actually works you know if you do it right and we've been doing Warts it years. and all Warts and all mm. Warts and, and, and all. that's why i encourage you to watch galsworth because you know she she will she won't take her clothes off either but she will <laughs> she will she will be showing everybody the naked trimmers <laughs> i saw that coming up she she mm. will be sh she's showing you she's showing you what's happening and 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 you can they can only do this for so long right they can only do that for so long because you guys are going to go no 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 stop it now Another lady, another lady contacted me today and said she was rehabbing her Frisian. She'd been following a particular group on Facebook <gasps> that is very, very, very uh, uh, gets right in the way of decent rehab for us. Is a bit of a thorn in our side. And she'd been following them and they'd been saying, take the toe off, take the toe off, take no substance to this at all. They haven't rehabbed all these horses, but they just take the toe, take the toe and because they'd heard it all you know and that's what other people had said and there's a few trimmers that might be on their admins and that's what they've been taught and it's just it's it's reckless absolutely reckless and uh and she said you know i followed their way and and eventually i just saw you and found you and went oh okay uh ooh that i'm going to just do it that way and she started following us and the free the 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 horse and he said what it wasn't the horse then just started getting better and better and better and better and and it converts you because you just go hang on a minute why were they telling me that and now i've done this and now my horse is getting better i mean you don't have all the answers of course you don't but what you do know is that that is wrong 
and it was always wrong. And if Mother Nature puts something there and you keep taking it away, then that is harm. You are harming that animal. If Mother Nature wanted something to be removed and you kept leaving it, that is also harming that animal. But it's Mother Nature who is your guide, not, not a few human beings who've done some research on a cadaver leg. No, that is not correct and we shouldn't be doing that. Um, uh, together we are strong. Leg ends, family, together. We are legends. Leg ends, yeah, definitely. Um, they don't use their brains to junk around the truth if the ish of the issue. It's the only answer. Too fixed in their mindset. Terrible at uh, attribute to have in a vet or a farrier. They should constantly be trying for better for our equines. I consequently questioned everything I was told as a GP. I remember having those conversations with you when, um, God, when you'd fall out with your, I hope I'm allowed to say this, where you'd fall out with your practice manager because they they were giving you like a time limit to, to talk to your patients and you were going, I can't do it in five minutes, right? These people are coming in because they need to talk and they need to tell me what's going on and I need to talk. I can't just, and I know everybody's under pressure, right? Because because the NHS is under pressure and it's so difficult, isn't it? Because all the time we're being pushed down by those up there who say, no, 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 no. For the good of what, precisely? And that we need to question. For the good of whom? Yes, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, well, we're not going to give up. Put it that way. Hi, Nikki. We won't give up. We won't give up. Well done. Thank you. We won't give up. Hello from Sweden. Don't know why I said it like that. Uh, us English people <laughs> like to pretend we can do accents. Hi there. Um, Charlotte said, these vets and farriers need to keep an open mind. Why are they so closed off? You questions what you you questioned what you saw that didn't fit with the with what you'd been told. Why don't they? I thought it was part of being a professional to constantly learn a question. I think for me was because I didn't go to farrier school. I didn't go to vet school. So I wasn't institutionalized and conditioned to think it was something else. I wasn't. I was an independent free thinker. I was able to be an independent free thinker. And so I opened my eyes as a scientist and saw what was going on and questioned it. And no, I didn't have anybody telling me one way or another. I just, other than really finding latterly, you know, at that time in the early 2000s, finding Jamie Jackson and really understanding the natural part of it and, and embracing evolution and me going, yeah, why does that, why, why are people, why does that so make people cranky? Why do people just think that is wacky when we're, we're embracing evolution? What, what is that about people? Why do they think that that's, oh, evolution? It's like 55 million years of evolution. Can you even comprehend when I'd be teaching my kids in the classroom, in the lab, and I'd be saying, you know, whereabouts are we on an analog clock? The dinosaurs like took up quite a lot of that clock, like the majority of the clock, right? Where are we? Where did the humans appear on that clock? At what time did the humans appear? Split seconds towards the end. That's where the humans appeared. That's how crazy it is. And and that was back then. Actual the world as we know it now that's gone completely mad. Who needs to? I think we just have this control complex, or control and godlike complex, where we we feel we need to just be seen to be fixing everything, you know, no matter what. Oh my God, the horse the horse isn't. It's not it's not going right. Stick a shoe on it. Oh, it goes better. No, but it goes better. But it's it's now buggering up their their joints. It's now causing problems in their hoof. Why wouldn't it? That serious concussive forces that are hitting the ground all the time. It causes uh, untold issues in their body. And yet we have people who are body workers who routinely tell people to shoe their horses. What is that about? I, it is. 
people have lost sight, right? People are, I also think people are a little bit afraid of being a free thinker, of being an independent, critical thinker. I think people are afraid. Like Gary said a few lives back, nobody backs us. We're at, we're not in the pocket of anyone. There's no big company funding us where we have to be careful what we say and we mustn't, you know, we must tow the party line. There's none of that. We are evidence-based, going out there time and time again. And, and yet again today, I was talking to another lady who was uh, worried about uh, one of one of our rehabs that's going through at the moment. And I was able to go, when, when they lose a little bit and they're scared and they're a bit frightened because what they've heard, you know, about P3, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm like, it's okay, we've been here before. And they all do it the same way. Here's a, lot, here's a bunch of pictures. Here you go. It makes people feel better because they go, oh my God, it's exactly the same. It's like, well, it goes exactly the same every single time. What makes it a problem is when we get in the way, when we get in the way. Hello from Spain. Hello. Morning from Australia. Hello, hello. <laughs> Back to that. <laughs> um, there are always naysayers. I think we should not give them the time. They don't deserve it. Keep this group alive. That should benefit the people who get in. Yeah. And, and well, I mean, it's going up crazy. You know, people are coming in all over the place, but you still see posts. You'll still see posts. And then it, it, you, you don't blame them. You know, as you get into this and you become more aware and if you've taken the challenges, you become even more aware. And then when you see certain posts, first posts, you're, first of all, you'll be able to help more. And you'll be a lot more able to step up and, and, and give them support that they need because it's a very scary time. But but the other thing that you'll notice is that you'll go, oh, dear. Oh dear, they're still down that rabbit hole. How are we going to? How should we chuck them a lifeline and sort of start towing them out? And sometimes when you start throwing them a lifeline, they don't want to listen because they're so stuck in what they believe, even though right there in front of them are things going wrong. Wouldn't you agree with that, Gary? Oh, for sure. Um, and even people that have been following us for quite some time they're not always 100 percent convinced not always it's really hard it is really hard when you've got all of that tradition that's going on but what you've got to say to yourself is is my horse getting better are my horse's feet getting better have I done everything that they have said on the and Phoenix way? That's the that, thing. That is the thing. Because, because you find you people, won't you, Gary? People, yeah. You can have people that say, oh, my goodness. Oh, and, and, and we've I tried it. Lens. Oh, oh, my goodness. We actually went to a lovely lady, um, and she'd been uh, on two of our workshops, and um, she messaged us, and we were traveling around the country, and she said, um, my horses aren't getting better. I've implemented everything. I've implemented everything and my horses aren't getting better. And we said, okay, um, so we're passing. We'll pop in. Do you know, she had this amazing track and it was surfaced. It was on a hill. The horse had a, an arena that they could roll in. They had shelter. Oh, my goodness, this track was, oh. We had track envy, forward. didn't we? We mm. had track envy. We really mm. did. Mm. But when we turned up, the water was by the stables. And the only hay that we could see out was right by the gate, right by the kitchen window. We walked that whole track and there was no remnants of hay anywhere. Just nothing and the horses nothing. were the horses were sh what we would term shut down shut down we, we were like what? they're not even interacting with us these horses they're just and and they just looked just De sad depressed. And, and depressed sad and actually depressed and shut down. Yeah, yeah. so we went along and with with um 
with a little bit of trepidation, <laughs> um, if trepidation is the right word. Basically, defending, 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 and um, we actually got in the car and were really quite cross, cross, <laughs> because we were um, we had gone out of our way. But it was lovely to hear a couple of months later our changes were implemented and they were very simple put small amounts of hay all over your track and she says oh my god i've got different horses it, 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 it is you've got to ask yourself am i doing this properly yeah we we get that all the time i followed the hm method and uh, well, not all the time, thankfully, but we do get it. I followed the HM method. We haven't got a method. It's a species-specific appropriate diet and management isn't a method. Uh, anyway, people call it that. I followed the HM method. Doesn't work. Didn't work for my horse. I'm trying a different trim now. Or a di And you're like, yeah. And we know. We know why it didn't work. Because you're not actually doing it the way that you should be doing it. And That's, that's uh, why we say that our success rate is 100%. But there are two caveats. You have to do it wholeheartedly our way and the trimming has to be right. That's it. It works, 100% success rate. Mm. And, so and, now and get I, on the challenges. So get on the challenges. How past you Phoenix and... Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do it, please help us, because only today my admins were, and Gary would have seen it, so there's a few things coming every day, the admins, are. we've got our own private group and they're telling us stuff that's going on, and then one of our admins put up a thing and went, Vinzi and Gary, these haven't been responded to yet, and, and I looked at it and just went, sink, <laughs> because in our private messages as well, at the back of HM, we're getting a ton of stuff that we're trying to catch up with, not that we're saying don't do it, no, we want you to contact us. But what we're saying is it gets increasingly harder and we're only at base camp. We've just arrived. We're taking off our rucksacks and we're just taking our shoes off and having a bit of a sit down by the fire. And then in the morning, we've got to put it all back on again and get going. And we'll probably go a couple of yards and that's how far we'll go. When eventually this group gets to the point when it's 5,000 members, and that won't be very long, it will be a monster by then, and it will be hard to keep on top of. By the time it gets to 10,000, and the rate that it's going at the moment, that ain't going to be that far away. We need help to keep this moving forward. We do, because the last thing that we want, or the last thing that I want, and I know me, is to just, just go, oh, 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 and just like kind of cover myself up and try and hope that it's not happening. I don't want to do that. I don't want to dive into a hole. I don't want to do that. I want to be able to keep this going. And it's so important that you guys need to help. This is this is more than just knowing a trim. This is more than just understanding diet and management. This is about changing the entire equine world. And we are just a few of us. We need to keep pushing because we will. We are, we are just a few of us. Um, in Germany, they do it. They post up pictures and say, this is a healthy hoof now. What I see in these pictures is not a healthy hoof. Rasped in line from the outside P3 is still in a bad position. Absolutely. I would like help from you guys because I think I need to take on the trimming myself. Okay. Well, the first place you start, honestly, is the 15-day challenge. That's number one. You go through that and then you go, right, I've, I've got a plan. You will have a plan. By the time you get to the end of the 15 day challenge, you'll have a plan. You will. You'll have a plan for what you want to do going forward. Then the final piece of the puzzle, uh, the trifecta, as Gary would say, it's right, isn't it? You yeah. would then you would then go. Now I need to know more about the trimming and then you get on to the 10 day challenge. But there's so much to do. It's not just about the trimming. You've really got to get it into you because remember when Gary just said then about people can come on the workshop and they can do it once or twice. And we've had people that have come on and done the workshop a couple of times, but they leave us 
they go into their own world and we're not there with them all the time. They slip and then they don't quite follow it and they don't quite get it and they don't quite, and then the principles just slip a little bit. And before you know it, they're getting the vet round every five minutes because there's problems. Instead of going, if we turned up going, oh, you just don't do it like that. Because I have to tell you guys, just sticking a track up is not the answer. If you just go, oh, I've got a, I've got a track up and it doesn't work or, or my horses have still got problems, there's a reason. And it can only be one of three things. Diet, management, or the trim. It can't be anything else unless you have some uh, disease that is uh, obviously, you know, going to cause the demise of that animal. But other than that, it's the diet, management, and the trim. Somewhere in there, in those simple three, will be your answer. Yeah. And it's about being true to yourself and going, oh, I've got a track up but are you really putting enough hay around? I We have 10 horses here and we, we have at least two and a half, half times as many feeding stations as we do horses. Why? Because we need to increase that movement and they're going around all the time, constantly moving around all the time. We, we you know, this is how we do it. And you so just sticking a track up and going, oh, well, you know, it doesn't work. It does, but you might not be. I've seen people put, like Gary said, either put hay in one place or just drag the hay along the ground. The horses don't care for that either because they'll walk all over it. You know, you've got to put it in certain plies. Build a mound. They love to climb. Get your hay up on top of the mound so that they have to stretch, so they have to use their body. Make your track a workout for them. Put put wood and poles along the track that span the track so they've got to go over them every time they've got to get to the water things like that make it make it's a it environment a... enrichment and you can yeah. get you, you can go to town and it doesn't have to be expensive it really doesn't it doesn't just to just um uh, uh just today um I, I was talking to one of our students um and one of their clients um uh the student was saying well their track needs to be narrower because there's a bit too much grass on it and then uh, um and then she went back and then she was going into trim and she said yeah they've gone a bit footy and and, and the student said well what happened and she said oh i moved the fence so they could have a bit of grass <laughs> I rest so, my case. So, it, it's, it, so, stop so you've messing got to, about. Yeah, <laughs> you've got to you've own got it. it. You've got to own it. And that's what we always say. There's there's, there's a big clue in, in the word owner, and it's the first three letters. Own, yeah. You've got to own it. You've got to own it. As soon as I followed a trimming method that encouraged a two-inch heel buttress, I had an extremely lame horse with constant separation and abscesses. Of course you did. Because P3 was in a... The, a problematic position um charlotte is right yes vet vets should be open-minded medicine is always changing i know and you know what we we say this we do say this but i and gary and i've said it over and over it won't be those professionals that will change the world it will be you guys because you will just not put up with it you will just stop. And, and it's already happening. Vets turn up and and, and they go, oh, the, the, this lady with the Shetland, the vet had said, you 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 know, you want to do this, that, and then she's going, no, I'm not doing it. What do you mean you're not doing it? I'm not doing it. You, you People need to go, okay, uh, can I see your case studies, please? How many horses have you trimmed? Do you really know about hoof care? Because I'd really love to know if you did. What, you mean you haven't? What, you mean you don't do any trimming? No, well, I don't need to. I'm a vet. I'd get a farrier to do that. Well, hang on a minute. No, 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 no. You, uh, you're telling me I've got to do physical things to my horse's foot. But you've never actually done that. You've never actually done that yourself and followed a horse through a year's rehab where you have been responsible for the hoof care and seen those issues get better or worse. Don't don't let them do it. Stand up, stand up, stand up. May I ask if we can? Dis yes, we are going to do it, Vivian. 
We are. I'm, I'm watching the clock. I've been showing my barefoot trimming your videos and talking his ear off for a few months now. Oh, dear. Last week, we trimmed my horse together, him doing the trim and me guiding him via your wonderful photos. He said, this is the opposite of what I've been taught. I told him I would take full responsibility and won't blame him if my horse's foot falls off. I'm grateful I have found a, a trimmer who's willing to, to learn. Great. Because many trimmers... Uh, I only heard of one the other day, which was so terribly sad, actually, because this lady is really stuck. She's got absolutely nobody. And this mare was in an awful position. And this lady, and I'm sure she wouldn't mind me telling you, is in her 60s. Um, she is she is not trimming fit, right? She's never been a trimmer, ever. She had nobody when she turned around to her trimmer and set who was incidentally put her horse in that awful position with incredibly high heels. This beautiful mare, she had her on a track. I'd seen the track, I'd seen what she was feeding her, all was well, but the mare was crippled. Crippled, I mean, really crippled. P3, really, but but, but big, big hooves. And um, this lady said to her trimmer, Look. And they'd been doing this for over two and a half years and the mare was getting worse. And she's and the and the and the trimmer, and that is where I say to you, it happens all the time, kept telling her it was her fault. It's not my fault, it's your fault. It's your fault. Couldn't suddenly see the distortion in this foot, which was crazily distorted and with huge, I mean high heels. And uh, and so she said to her, I found this group, I'd really like to follow what they're doing would you be prepared so she sent us some links she went and looked at the video she contacted the owner and she said i don't agree with that i'm sorry i'm not coming back and walked away now why did she do that if welfare of the horse was paramount why did she do that why so she did so this owner had two options actually put that horse down or step up and she contacted me she had a consultation. She had a consultation with me. She went and bought nippers and a rasp. She got herself on the 15-day challenge, and she's now just finishing. I think she's nearly all the way through the 10-day challenge. She, We started with a second consultation. She, so we've had two consultations so far. And then the second one, I was with her, with her horse. And I'm looking at this foot thinking, I just want to get in there. I just want to get in there and do it myself. But it was very compacted. And I'm thinking, I don't know how I'm going to teach this lady who has no trimming experience on a horse that is in agony how to do what she needs to do. But we did. We got through it. And she has now got the majority of the heels down. And that horse is already moving more fluidly. There's, there's still more to do and there's still more for her to learn, a massive amount for her to learn, huge amount for her to learn. And you know what? Another thing that happened was that she found a trimmer in her neighborhood, a gentleman who was, uh, I think, in his late 60s, early 70s. So kind of do it a bit retired now. A name that I knew of um, who had originally trained with Jamie Jackson and he was going she found him and she was so excited and she said, oh, my God, Lindsay, this is incredible. And I went, oh, brilliant. But we know what needs to be done, don't we? And we've got to, this is what needs to be. She said, yes, yes. Okay. So he turned up. He didn't even touch the horse's heels. He just went, oh, we can't bring the heels down too soon because of the possibly soft tissue damage. And I'm like, oh, the horse is walking around on the tip of its pedal bone. And I was praying he was going to do a really good job. And, and he didn't. And and he just want, and he wanted to take the toe back. It just goes to show how you, off center you can go, right? You can lose it. So do you know what she did? Because now she knows and she can advocate. She went, I'm sorry, we're not going to be a good fit. This time she told him that that was it. And she said to me, I'm going to do this, Lindsay. And I said, you're going to do this and we're going to do it together. You and me are going to do it together. And it's working because gradually, gradually, that mare is starting to walk better and better and better. Is she out of the woods? No. 
Is she, does she have some bone remodeling? Yes, but not very much. Is she going to get abscesses? Probably. Is it a long road still? Yes. But are we making progress? Oh, yes, we are. Have they made progress in the last two and a half years? No, they haven't. And that is a lady who's never picked up a rasp and a pair of nippers in her life. And, and definitely not somebody who would be wanting to become a professional trimmer. Let me put it that way. Right? And she did it. She did it herself. Why? Because she did it. She, she paid for the consultation. She, she got everything ready. She got the photographs ready. We went right through it. She got herself on the 15-day challenge. She got herself on the 10-day challenge. She followed those guidelines. She got me on another call. We went through it over and over. That is why. Because she, O-W-N, owned it. Owned it. And did she go to sleep crying at night? Oh, she did. She had a few tears. She was exhausted. One time after a trim, she said, I, I can't do any more. I've got to go and have a cup of soup. I'm cold and I, and, I, and I can't do any more. But she had her cup of soup and she felt better and she went out and carried on. That is a Phoenix warrior. That's what it's and, about. And it, feel, it makes me feel quite emotional. I'll be honest. It, it makes me feel quite emotional. It does make me feel emotional. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I it, guess I think it makes us feel emotional as well. Yeah, because let's do it. you can see that that person pulled out all of the stops just like we do. Mm. Do, you, do, you, do you see what I mean? It, yeah, it, 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 she, at like one point, minded. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, at one like point, minded. at like one minded. point, she was feeling guilty because because she's she's talking to me a lot, and and I and I said because I'm giving her a lot of support, and she said, I, I just I just feel so guilty that that you know I'm taking up your time, and I went, don't worry, because you're not going to need me soon. It's only short lived. I only yeah. need to be here for a little. It's like Mary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> the Mary Poppins of the horse world. That's what Bethany called me. She said, you're like Mary Poppins. It's all you don't need me. You only need me until you get yourself sorted. And then when you're sorted, occasionally you'll check back in and just with Gary or me or, a, or another one of our pros, because that's who probably I'll put her in touch with in the end. And she went, I am, she said, I am, I, 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 I'm okay. And I, I, I made her feel good. I said, it's okay. You, can, I, I might be, and I'll be honest with you, I might be here at the other end going, oh, God. Oh, God, I don't know. I don't know. Because it's all about hoof care. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if we're, don't know if we're going to be able to do that. And I did think that at the start with her. But you know what I did? I went, come on. You can do this. You can do this. Even though deep inside I'm going, I don't know whether she can. But I was still going to say it anyway. And you know what? She damn well did. And I can't wait for her to share her story with you. Beautiful, beautiful mare. I cannot wait to, for her to share her story. And I've got hundreds of stories like that. Hundreds. Right. We need to talk about the thing that, that lots of people are waiting for. Just just go through a couple of things here. Lots of people are lazy, don't want to think and rely on the so-called farriers and vets, whether they are obviously lazy themselves and can't think beyond what they learned 50 years ago. Heck, five years ago. You can mention something until you're blue in the face, probably like talking to the wall. The poor hooves can be there in front of them, but lots of people do not want to think for themselves. Yeah. Well, that's life. That's people. And we are conditioned. And Gary and I have a saying. We call them meatloaf people. Anybody I'll do anybody? anything for love, but I won't do that. And we're surrounded by meatloaf people yeah. who swear blind they'll do anything, anything for their horse. But not just that bit. Not that bit. Can't do that bit. I, I can't do that bit. So there you go. A uh, common thing here is, okay, this is good, but it doesn't work with my horse. Uh -huh. I must have unicorns because it all works for them. We've said that. Oh, people say that all the time. You know, oh, you're just lucky. You're lucky. you got special horses. 
That's right. All of us have got special horses. They just came to us, these special, special horses. Yeah. We should see our herd. Do you think they're special? Our herd was very special because most of them were broken before they came to us. Oh, yes. Over 90% of our herd were broken before they came to us. Mm -hmm. And now they're not broken. No, no. How no. many vets can say that? How many farriers can say that? See, I've given, we've got, no, but we've got sayings. Look, I laughed out loud. This is I'm doing the dishes, meatloaf people. You, you know what I mean, right? You know what I mean. Anyway, everybody's been dying, dying for us to talk about high, low syndrome. And it's not that exciting. <laughs> it really is. You can make isn't. it exciting. Can you I? talk and I'll do a jig. Oh, God, how on. am I going to make it exciting? <laughs> All right. So. What is high-low syndrome? First of all, before I go on about what high-low syndrome is, you, what are you drinking there? Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Didn't believe it's just Coca-Cola. Before I start telling you what, what, <laughs> I'll be round in a minute for mine. Before I start, what do you think high low syndrome is you tell me because you're a desperate there's so many of you here want to talk about it <laughs> but i want to know why you want to talk about it what is it that that is that is bothering you about it what is it that you think it 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 needs such a lot of discussion about i mean i know but but you tell me you tell me what you think you tell me what you think and, uh, and while we're waiting, I'm going to tell you that since the 14th of, so a month, in one month, uh, in one, I'm going to do a little tot up near, and this is only the, um, well, I don't know if I've got all of those. No, I haven't got all of those. In only one month, let me get onto this one, we have had, around about 60 or 70 people, I can't tell you how, I'm actually, I think it's more than that, sign up for the Phoenix 15-day challenge. That is all of those people about to start changing the world because you think you're only taking it for you, but you're not. You're not. You're, you're taking it so that when you speak to your mate and you can turn around and tell them, they start thinking about it and they start implementing what you're in, what you're encouraging them to do. OK, so one foot is more upright. One foot is more upright. High low syndrome that the clues in the name. You've got it. Angela said, I was just curious after hearing the term to get leg straight. You need to put hoof lower on one side. OK. Um, right. So. High low syndrome. I'm not sure I've got any decent. Um, I, I'm just trying to think because they'd be. Um, I don't know if I can find. I see if I can find something for you in a minute. But high low syndrome is when um, you have one foot that has a steeper angle on the dorsal toe wall than the other foot who doesn't that is has a lower angle and tends to be wider and looks flatter and more splayed out. Um, I haven't got it on this computer, but I have one of my very, very old clients have an absolutely perfect example of that. And I, I, I haven't actually got it here. Um, I presume that you just trimmed the HSP for high low syndrome and let nature do its thing. Well, yes. So, so why is it? I think a lot of people want to know why it occurs. Is it a true club foot? And is it a true is it true high low syndrome and why does it occur well there's lots of reasons why horses there's lots of reasons out there that people tell you why horses club their feet so what's a club foot a club foot is when one foot has a very very steep angle now the other foot doesn't have to be splayed and flat the other foot can just be a normal looking foot although a lot of people will still call that high low, low syndrome in natural fact it's just they have a club foot on the other foot or a kind of club foot it's steeper. The angle's steeper. 
So there's lots of reasons why people got, you know, justify why the, this this has happened. One of them is the grazing stance. So that's been popularized over the years that when a foal begins to graze, they graze in a particular way because they're handed. Right. And so they graze in a particular way and therefore it causes a club foot. Well, the only thing that I have to say against that is, why doesn't that happen with all horses then? Because all horses, they're saying, are handed, right? They have a preference. Well, if, all right, I, I, I wouldn't say I disagree uh, with that particularly. Do I think that horses are in the domestic world imbalanced? Yes, I'm going to go back to that in a minute. But why aren't all horses? So let's critically think our way around this. Why aren't all horses doing that to their front feet? Why is it only a few? Why are only a few of them with this high-low syndrome or this clubby foot? So is it more than they've got a grazing preference? Is it because they have got uh, some conformational issue? Is it something that's further up the leg? Is it something that is causing that horse to want to have more upright foot? Often I say when we're talking about um, horses, I talk about a table leg, right? All four legs of a table. And we go to a pub or we go to a restaurant and there's nothing more irritating than a table that wobbles. It's got four legs, but it wobbles. And we're like, oh, so what do we do? We'll fold up a, a you know, a beer serviette mat. or a beer yeah, mat yeah. and we stick it under a leg and and <clears throat> suddenly it stops wobbling. Suddenly it's it's okay again. So have we got a problem in the shoulder where the horse really can't can't manage to use his shoulder properly but you can't notice it that much but he's a bit tight in his shoulder so consequently he consequently he walks with his foot in this manner so hence the reason he's getting a bit of a club foot is it because uh of the way that they're ridden is it because the saddle is hurting them and they aren't using their feet properly and they're not striding out properly and that is what's causing the issue is it their, what they put on their heads? So they're not able to actually freely have their head. So they're either tied down a lot. A lot of people ride with their horses um, in a collection. They seem to think that that's the right pose to ride in. And so they ride very tight with the horses sort of collected and the backs bent like this, and they're not collected at all. They're in what we call false, false collection. Is it that? Do you see where I'm going with this? How do we peel off the layers of the onion what is causing it now the imbalance throughout the body horses when they are born in the wild they are up on their feet as foals quite quickly it's quite a remarkable thing they're up on their feet quite quickly and the the, the foal themselves grow at, at a tremendous rate the body of the foal grows at a tremendous rate and you, uh, rate and you know their legs are really long and dangly aren't they and they've got to kind of catch up with themselves so the hoofs the hooves grow fast too like a third faster even even more than that it's not quite double but they they go really really fast compared to the adult hoof now, lots of things happen to foals when they are born in the domestic world. In the it, so, hang on. So we're still in the in the in the wild. So the foot's growing fast because the body's growing fast, and the foot the foot's got to expand and get bigger so that the, it can accommodate the bigger horse above it as it grows quickly over a period of a year, two years. By the time they've got to two, they're two thirds there, aren't they? They're nearly, you know, they're, they're two thirds off how big they're going to be, pretty much. But when they're in the wild, they're, they're prey animals and they get running. And if you've ever seen a horse run across a field and you stand behind them when they're running, you'll notice that their heads go like this from side to side. Because the eyes are on the side of the head. They're not on the front of the head like us because we're predators. And now why are they doing that? Well, 
they're making sure as they run that that nasty mountain lion isn't running up behind them and going to grab their foal and eat them. And the mum is saying to the foal, this is how we run. We check, we check what's going on behind us all the time. We're checking our rear view mirrors all the time. Our, our, side, our, our side mirrors, we always need to do that. But in the domestic world, it's a very, very... So that balances the body. That balances the body. They're balanced left and right. No tightness on one side than the other. But in the domestic world, it's a very different story. Many foals are kept in stables with their mums, with their dams, for quite a long period of time. They're not allowed to go out and move around much. Um, when they do go around, it when they do move, go out, they're not going the miles that these little foals run out in the wild. So they're only doing a little bit because they're foals. And we don't want them to get hurt. And then we're just a bit scared that we we, you know, we do too much with them. So there's not just that too. There's something else that gets added into it. The mare is being piled full of feed. Now, I'm not saying that all of these things have to be in place for a high-low syndrome, but it only has to be a few of these things in place, right? The mare's being chucked with, uh, filled with a load of, of, high, of, um, of high nutrient feed because She's got a baby, right? And she's got to feed the baby, even though she's not moving around, but because she's in a stable most of the time. And so that's going through to the foal. Stress goes through to the foal too. And when the foal gets mishandled, that goes through to the mare. And generally it just adds to, to a little bit of piquance to the fact that emotionally they're not quite right because they just need to be out. And then an odd thing also happens. They don't tend to get hoof care. And yet their hooves are moving and growing really fast. Gary and I went to a stud farm. Um, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 um, yeah, what an experience. But, but there were many foals there that were in stables with their, their, their dams and they wanted some of them to be trimmed, but not all of them because some of the dams didn't want it. Some of the mares were like, nope. So they just wouldn't get done. And if you don't keep on top of the hoof care, things can start to happen. So we've got unbalanced bodies. We've got not the right nutrition. We've got not enough movement. We've got, uh, um, we've got lack of hoof care. We've got lots of things going on. And then later in life, when somebody said, I've got a 10, 10 12 year old horse and it's got high low syndrome, do you know what? Do you know how to fix it? <laughs> Well, the fix was back along, way back there. That was the fix, actually, not now. But there's another element to this, and the hoof care element is a big element. Only today I was talking to somebody um, who might even be here this evening, I don't know, who uh, had a, a hoof care professional, not, not our flavour, a different one, who had looked at a foot, this lady thought she had high-low syndrome. She actually sent the images to me, and I'm like, mm, that's not what it looks like to me. And she said, um, this one's got, you know, this one's clubbing. And I went, right. And then when we looked underneath the foot, it hadn't been trimmed for, uh, properly to the hard sole plane. Heels weren't down properly. Bars had been left. There was infection in the foot. So the horse is also not using his foot properly, because there's all that too. Wrong diet, wrong management, wrong trim. They're going to have painful feet. They're not going to walk properly. Um, and uh, and then she said, the hoof care professional thought personal preference trimming, personal preference opinions, subjective, went, oh, I think that the uh, she's clubbing that foot, so I'm going to leave the heel. I think she's clubbing it. Yeah, I think she's clubbing the foot. So I, I don't want to take down, to, you know, because because they're not taught properly what that what actually it is. So I think she's clubbing the foot. So I'm not going to trim it. What do you think happens in that next six weeks? That horse puts on more foot six weeks later. The trimmer goes, mm, I'll take a little bit off, but I won't take very much off. Before you know it, you got a foot like this and it and it and it isn't laminitic, but it's like that. And then we go, oh, I've got a club foot now. 
So where's the truth in where that club foot lies? So on to the next bit, how you fix it. Movement. 24-7, and it's it, crucial with these animals. 24-7, 365, movement, movement, movement. No confinement at all. Excellent trimming. As in, always down to the HSP. Always, always, always. Never leaving bars. Never let an infection get hold. Letting that horse have the right species specific diet and it is important because everything's got to work together for this to improve if it's a conformational thing then movement is going to help right the right kind of movement but not on a track where you've got one hay bale over there in the corner and everybody has to eat off the one hay hay bale or there's one or there's just two and everybody has to eat off the two so they're standing around camping out of the hay all the time no 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 you have got to make that animal move. And the best way you can do that is use food. So spread it around. Put it in buckets. Put it in hay nets. Hang it from the trees. Put it all over the place. Put it on mounds. That is how you treat it. There is no other way to treat um, differences in hooves than the way we would treat any other situation. And the environment and uh, uh, and all of that can help, but you don't have to wait till you've got a high low horse to to be able to do that. That should be what we're striving to anyway, isn't it? Yeah, and and I mean you you're you're getting these horses and you're. Um, I mean I I'm not going to. Should we do it together? I, I'm going to, I tell you, we're going to have a little exercise. We're going to, um, oh, come back to StreamYard. We're going to Google high-low syndrome and we're going to look at some of, some of the images and we're going to talk about it. And we're going to see if it can give us any indications why there might be issues. So let's just, let's just uh, put it on share. Let's have a look, shall we? Okay. So here's one I started earlier. Can everybody see this? So I just put high-low syndrome in horses. Let's look at this one. Um, do you see that this foot is low here, but this foot is high? Can we see anything in these images that might indicate to us that there might be some issues with this foot? Gary, do you want to do you want to start it off? Well, the position of the the, the foot here. Uh, oh, we've got chipping around the edges. Yep. Um, what might that? Got, what might that indicate? Well, it's not trimmed correctly. Um, okay. it, it looks as though it's trimmed flat um, because the the arc, the quarters should have um, uh, a certain amount of arch. But we don't decide that when we're trimming. The foot decides that because the hard sole plane tells us where that is. <clears throat> and, um, and they're a little bit of a scoop here isn't it there is and a the bit rings of a scoop and you've got the ring so there's a little bit of inflammation going on there you can see that in the other one as well um but yes perhaps one foot is slightly different to the other yeah or also the way that this this foot is being carried at the top and it might be just a photo it doesn't look as though that that bony column is in as good a position as the other one no, and what and what are we doing here, guys? What 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 happens if we allow those heels to go up like that? That hoof care professional had said. What are we doing there? And incidentally, that's that's a funny thing because I, people used to always call them trimmers, etc. And I stopped doing that some years ago. I just called them hoof care professionals, which I'm quite pleased that other people are doing that now. Why don't you just call them farriers and why don't you call them trimmers? Trimmers. I don't want to make the distinction because in our mind. Frankly, um, no. You're one either is getting it right or you're getting it wrong. Yeah. So here's here's another one. Right. Let's just take a look at this one then. What can we see here? So this is uh, equine therapeutic farriery. What can we see here? Well, the heel bulbs are really contracted on the uh, on the um, on both of them, but more on so both on the, of on the them. Right. 
on both, both of them. them chipping we've got very contractive here look at here are the lateral cartilages can you see them really yeah. bulging out when lateral cartilages bulge like that you know that that horse has got contraction and they've both got it so what would we be saying here that this foot has just basically got away with itself because it isn't a true high low in terms of confirmation because this foot also has problems and i guarantee to you it will have been a still a similar case of oh we don't want to go down too far far because there's compaction right that's, that's another one right let's have a look at uh here's another one all right there's another one so similar again really are we trimming it correctly? So we don't know what the toe looks like, but it doesn't look like there's much of an arch there, does it? Doesn't, know. How long has that horse been shod? How much has that, uh, in the over the years, has the horse been shod? And, and here we can see that there's contraction beginning, but this side's got contraction too. All right, let's keep going. Here's another one. Well, I think it speaks for itself, doesn't it? Incorrect trimming. So correct trimming, not having shoes, not having underrun heels, not having laminitis, chronic laminitis, better system, better diet, better management. And these two feet would begin to even out because they do. They begin to become more even. And yet people will go to town looking at the bodies and looking at looking at, oh, it's got to be up here. Don't look there first. Get everything else right first. Get everything else right first. Here's another one. Well, how are we going to fix it then? We've got a very upright one. We've got one that's got a more of an upright angle, one that hasn't. It's got a lower angle. Well, you know, we could start by not chopping the toe offs. Perhaps we could start by having better hoof care that we don't leave the shoes to grow into the foot over a period of time and the nails to drag down the hoof wall if we're going to have it shod. Um, but let's face it, if you're shoeing it, you're never going to fix any of this, are you? You've got to get the let the horse shape its own natural foot because guess what? The farrier is shaping this one. Look how much toe he's taking. You just got to go looking and finding it. And I, I haven't set this up. I'm just, I'm just oh, looking. Can you go here. back to that one that you just, just saw? Um, or just, um, Which uh, one was that? Uh, the one, one with the two that are shod. Yeah. Under this one on the left, can you see how thin that that shoe has been worn? Yeah. What does that tell us? That tells us that that's where he wants his pillar of support but the shoe has been worn thin, almost to a razor thinness, because the shoe is not dynamic and organic and can grow back. Mm. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? That's really well, that's... helping that, that club foot, isn't it? It is, and and we should do a whole live on that, Gary. That would be, they'd find should, that yeah. interesting. They'll find yeah. that interesting. You will find that interesting. All right, let's find one more. Let's see if we can find a juicy one. Let's go see if we can find um, a, a juicy one. Um, I mean, just looking at that picture just for a start off. They're calling this high-low hooves. So that's, um, oh, let's go back. Where are we? Are you, are you still with me? Are you on here? You see that? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's just shocking, isn't it? And with then we wonder why horses are, I don't know why my horse has got problems. I do. Mm, I do too. Um, so we'll have situations like this, okay? So this is a classic situation. Oh, back again. I keep I keep clicking on them. I'm trying to get this to um, brr, blow up. I can't get it to blow up. Why won't it? Why won't it get bigger? Oh well. Can you see it? Yeah. Right, so what we've got here is what we call, um, it could just be broken back, but the fact that we've actually got P, P3 in a negative position, it's not just broken back, it's an NPA. So it's a negative Palmer angle, All right? And it's a front foot. So we've got, what, uh, are we focusing on the fact that this one's a little bit of a sharper ang angle and this is a 
Hang on just a moment. Do you mind in the back rows just being a little quieter? Please. This is my daughter and her boyfriend having too much fun out there. Um, are we focusing on this one as being wrong because we've now got high low? Or actually, is it this one that's wrong? Well, I think you can all probably see what's going on here. And this one is wrong. Now, what's going on here? We've got, oh, look, it may be, it, it, let me do it. We've got a lot of toe and not a lot of heel. So who's been doing the hoof care there and they've been shoving it in a shoe? It's got caudal hoof failure. It's got absolute, we're into its digital cushion here. This poor horse has not been allowed to, to, to create the same, the, the foot that it needs. So the whole back of the foot is, is, is problematic. Now, the way that they would treat that is by wedging this. Now, it, it is problematic because it has got an incredibly low heel, but it's also got a little bit much here if you were to balance it. But if you look at this and you try to balance that to the front, you'd, there'd be some taken off, but you'd, you, you've got problems here at the back. So the thing you have to do with this one is, is support, get the right trim, but also to support in boots, not wedges, and you let the horse begin to shape its own foot. This is all down to unnatural hoof care, sticking shoes on and letting the caudal hoof fail, fail. Whereas here, we've got P3 in a far more normal position. And you can see that because it's all in line. And you, and you can tell, right, there's no laminitis going on here. We've got no stretch. The hoof distal phalanx distance here is um, uh, not greater at the bottom than it is at the top. It's equal all the way down, isn't it? But this foot is the one that's got the problem. Again, incorrect hoof care. Incorrect hoof care. Here's another one. Oh, this is just x-rays and laminitis. Oh, God, we've done that one to death, haven't we, at the moment? So I think I think I probably I think that's it. We're not going to get any more now. I think we've probably got enough. Final one on this one. Let's have a look at this one. So this is in shoes. Look at it. Look at those feet. <laughs> uh, there's nothing natural about either of those feet. Well, my horse has got high low, low syndrome. What your horse needs is those shoes removing the correct trim plenty of movement 24 7 and you not riding him making matters worse until he recovers look at the lines down here abscessing lines okay right i think that completes this sermon that was good wasn't it wasn't it that was good Did we enjoy that uh, la 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 I've missed. I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to go backwards. Um, yeah, Charlotte says crap trimming. Of course it is. Oh my god, horrid hoof care. Just Google it. Google it and go and have a look. What are they doing to the heel or the left? I know. Can the digital cushion ever recover from that? Well, the digital cushion matures with the horse. It's a very specialised tissue, and it's a fibro fatty fibro cartilage tissue. So much so that when it's when it's a good um healthy digital cushion and you um chop into the back of the foot cadaver foot it'll make a crunching sound a bit because it's it's got it's fibro cartilage it's fibro fatty fibro cut into it, it's almost sounds it, it's it's really it's really weird substance there's nothing like it that i've come across anywhere else um and and it's it's almost it's almost akin to a funny type of grisly type grisly fatty type material mm. isn't it mm. and there are blood vessels in there people think that mm. there aren't but there are there are and and there are also sensors in there particularly underneath the uh, navicular bone lots of um nerve receptors uh lots of Lots and lots of research has been done on digital cushion. When I say lots, some research has been done on digital cushions, particularly in cows. But can it recover? To a certain extent, yes, it can. Will it ever be what it should have been? I don't know. We don't think so because we can't. You can't ever really take away full contraction. It, it will over the years get better. Um, but the digital cushion will get scarred, we found, just like everything else. And so you have to allow the horse to develop it. But is it going to be an easy fix? Mm, no, 
it's it's over they're, they're quite difficult those with caudal hoof failure and that all that caused it was a human being yeah uh, suggestion if the arrow were a different color like red or orange it would be easy to see i know i, I can't change I, I I'm try. Gonna, I'm going to research that. <laughs> Gary, let Gary research because I tried on a live a while back and I changed the colour and made it bigger, and you lot couldn't see it. I give it a go. We give it a go. <laughs> Does high low syndrome make it more difficult to rehab from acute laminitis? No. Well, no, because it's 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 a separate thing. It's it, it's separate and and similar. How do you rehab a horse from acute laminitis? Well, you're you're doing the right kind of trim. But if you're forever turning up at a club foot and going, oh, it's clubbing itself, better be careful with the heels. And then the next time you turn up, oh, it's clubbing itself, better be careful with the heels. What now happens is you're going, oh, it's a real old club foot, that one. It probably wasn't. Just you thought it was. I'm not saying there aren't. There are, but there aren't as many as you think there are. Um, my filly developed the high low when I bought her at Weanling and she started to move 24 7 in March. She was not fed at ground level before. The heel of the high foot grows back in no time when trim. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, asked me, Ajig asked me there, why is she always talking about P3? I said, right let me draw it blah blah i'm giving a lesson while i'm watching lesson brilliant is that to your son that's lovely well done well done you isn't it great how things are exciting and teaching youngsters and um susan says are these exams and tests are there exams and tests in the challenges we're not that cruel no there's no <laughs> test but um there are some interactive like puzzles Quiz and, quizzes and stuff. quizzes and stuff like that that can help you um consolidate what you've learned um and if you think oh perhaps i why did i get that one wrong and the, the good thing with the um online challenges you can think why did i not get those all right i need to go back and restudy that bit yeah it's really good for that you it's can just go to consolidate back and your learning it. Yeah, it's just it's just to help you. It's just to help you consolidate your we, learning. It's we just, don't we don't we don't we get don't. to see those results or anything like that. No, it, it's it's just a, it's just a quiz to help you. Yeah, and and they're fun those quizzes, and they're they're kind of broken up. So, um, <clears throat> they're very popular uh, no. even in our school because we do us we we do a quiz at the end of every every week, um, with within our school, and um, they are. Some of them are extremely popular. And I, Some and I, are not. <laughs> <laughs> and and they take me ages to do. And I and at one point when we were, I'd got I'd got so many modules in when I was building the school, and I was like, I said to Gary, I don't, oh, they take me so long to do them. I'm not going to do them anymore. And we went a whole module without them. And students were coming through going, um, hello. Where are the interactive lessons? Sorry, I really love those interactive lessons. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't need them, do you? Oh, I really love them. That's what I really like. And I'm like, oh, God. Majority so rules. They had to be done. <laughs> I had to go back and do them. Take hours and hours and hours doing these lessons, doing these interactive quizzes. It's great. I tell you what. I mean, I, we are blowing our own trumpet, aren't we? But you get in there and it's quality stuff. You'll enjoy it. It's all quality stuff in there. Um, what's this? 15-day uh, challenge pathway. Thank oh, somebody you. asked. Um, the, what's the link? Uh, uh, what's the link? So I just I just put it up whilst we were what what whilst you were rabbiting on. Ah, uh -huh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, okay. They treated Rico. Ah, oh, hi, Ramona. Ramona has just become one of our newest HMB Pro students and she's in Spain. And Ramona's language is German. That's her first language, right? She also has to speak Spanish and she also has to speak English. And of course, she has to speak English to do the course. But we've got transcripts. So you can download the transcripts, translate, translate them into your language and then follow along. That helps if your English is, is not quite 
as because there's certain words. They treated Rico's front left like a club hoof till 2019. The different how the hoof is now is amazing. Trim the Phoenix way. I send you pictures in the messenger. Yeah. Brilliant. Some incredible things. She, but also with her horses, she was keeping them moving and doing things. And yeah, it's just it's just great. When you start to see it yourself, you're like, whoa, this is amazing. A describe a club foot, please. I don't understand the term. So a club foot is you got you got two feet, two, two, two front hooves, right? And and a club foot is very steep, and the other one is quite low. So the angle is very steep, and on this one it's lower. So this this ends up clubbing because the heels go up and up and up and up. And actually what happens is by doing that, it rotates P3 inside. So horses that have very clubbed feet can or can be walking around with P3 rotated, depends how much toe they're taking, or they could have just gone up like Coke cans. Just depends. See. You just have to know this stuff. Um, would like to see these photos. Um, what photos? Oh, from Ramona. Congratulations, Ramona. Uh, all right. You want to see them. I don't know if I can find them that quick. Uh, oh, no, she's just, she has just sent them now. All right. Okay. You ready? Thanks, Ramona. Um, 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 um I just got to put it into something like a whiteboard because let me just stick it in here. Uh, copy Otherwise image. You see all your messages on Messenger. Otherwise, you <laughs> get. You, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see that. That's shocking. All right, lovely. These are brilliant photos. I don't know if I want to share them with you. Do you really want to see them? <laughs> Do you want to see them? Do you want to see them? Um, this is why we love having a big family because our family do wonderful things like this get ready you're going to see something really good here look at this so what we've got here is in 2019 can you see how steep this angle is how high the heels are can you see the red bruising around the uh, lateral cartilages look at this one how short it is granted that the the uh, the picture's probably doing a little bit of that but then look look now as the hoof begins to change do you see the angle in the toe wall because the heels are coming down trim the phoenix way for some years bless you what do we think of that guys that's cool speaks isn't for itself, it doesn't it speaks for itself that's cool isn't it there you go coke cans i got it do you see so this is like a coke can oh wrong one uh where am i here so this is a bit like the coke can like i'm saying you see the how high the heels are and there are trimmers out there that tell you there are methods that just don't follow the natural hoof and will tell you the horse give the horse more heel what are they talking about look how steep this is at the front and then look at this what a difference what a difference and i think i've also got a um I might have another. Where's the image when you when we when you stopped, Ramona? If you're listening, where's the image when you stop trimming every like couple of weeks and you let the horse kind of shape his foot a bit more? I don't know where that is. Yeah. So there you go. Look at that. Isn't that great? Brilliant. So that's a great yeah. example. A great example of of how. People can see a club foot and go, that's a club foot. Oh, better respect the club foot and leave it alone. Not necessarily so. You've got to let the horse move, 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 move. And then it will tell you with the correct trim whether it needs it to be left alone or not. Uh, brilliant. Looks so much more comfortable. There you go. I hope you enjoyed that. So we finally cracked it. We've talked about high-low syndrome. <laughs> Part of me didn't want to because I knew I was going to have to tell you all that back bit that goes with it. But you know that now. And part of the 15 day challenge is us talking about natural horse and hoof care. NHHC, the NHHC triangle is what we talk about and how important it is. You get every single bit of it right. Ketos. Oh, God. Ketos. 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 
high. <laughs> it's far. What was it? High var. It's far. It's star. High far. It's too difficult. You've obviously got one of those languages. This is far too difficult. Your your you, fin, finish is like. Is it finish? Is that how we say? Is it? like up here in terms of difficulty. English is like. <clears throat> um. You mean from last December since October? I think I'm on a six week trimming. Yeah. So so, Ramona wanted to do the pro course, and I said to her, you know, when you do the pro course, you are not going to let you trim every three weeks or so. You're going to have to trim every six. And she was like, oh, cold turkey and uh, uh worried about it and i said because she's always worried about his balance and i said leave trim properly to the hard soul plane that so many people want to trim like every three weeks because they're not quite getting it down to where it needs to be when it needs to where it needs to be in the first trim trim to the hard soul plane and then see what happens leave it six weeks so she started doing that and she was like oh light bulb moment uh hiva ilta hiva ilta Finish is tricky. You're telling me. Hi, Bart. Uh, oh, here we go. She just sent it. One last thing before we go. Quick. She just sent me another one. Um, copy image. Let's Isn't technology in. wonderful? I know, right? It's fab, isn't it? It's great. So, so here he is. Here's his foot. Let me have a look. This, I didn't mean this one, actually. I meant the one where it showed that slight difference between how it used to look and how it looks now when you changed your trimming slightly. But we're going to show everybody anyway because it's a lovely foot. Uh -uh. There we go. There's his foot. Look at this foot here. So he's got a little tiny little bit of chipping because he's got a little bit of a, a, a like a scar that runs down there. You can see, but there, there you can just see it here in his toe. And there's just a little bit here of, 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 um, of separation. Now that's not, now this is important to use because this say, because this isn't laminar separation. This is separation. And I was talking to a lady about this today where stones get in here and push the sole that way. And one of the reasons that happens is because the horse hasn't always been trimmed all the way down to the hard sole plane at the quarters, right? Um, or the trimmer has been taking off, just not basically doing it quite right. And so dear old um, uh, Ramona is, is now on the way. There she is, HMP Pro. On the way to being a pro. Bring it on, girl. Bring it on. Um, talking of technology, I love the automatic subtitles. My favourite tonight is Pedalbone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we, oh my god, I completely forgot. Right, I set you a challenge. We're gonna we're doing these little mini challenges, aren't we? I set you a challenge. Why does your thing? Are we going to talk about it tonight? Because if you've not come up with the challenge, sorry, flops. If you've got come up with an answer for it, I'm going to roll it over till tomorrow because I, I forgot to talk about it. The challenge was your fingernails keep on growing, right? Yet they're stuck to your finger. How does that happen? How come your fingernail just doesn't come off? Because it's growing constantly. How come it's stuck? I don't understand. Maybe we'll talk about that tomorrow. Can you remind me to do the fingernail thing tomorrow? I will. We're not. I've, we haven't got time now. I've been. I will not go beyond an hour and a half. I. Pr I am not doing that. I need to go and eat some food. I'm not doing it. I'm watching the clock going. Not doing it. Hour and a half. Not doing it. All right, my lovelies. It's been a great show. We've. We. What have we covered? We've covered high low syndrome. We've talked about tradition. We've talked about becoming a phoenix warrior we talked about owning it as an owner that ow look he's look Foxy. talked about owning it you've got to own it you've got to own it yourself um is there a way for you to set up a buy me a coffee link for those of us who can't afford the challenge yet but want to give something i've seen it used on instagram where people can send money as a thanks for the content thank you so much for what you're doing for all these no we're not doing that thank you so much for that. Thanks for the offer, we're not, though. We're not going to set up a Patreon. We're not going to do any. We're not going to put anything behind a firewall. 
only our challenges because they because that's the that's a route to something. These are lots of lots of bits of information and lots of content that we want you to have because you'll never get to watch all of it. We know that. Um, and it's, there's no definite route through it. But thank you so much. That's very, very lovely and kind of you. Coffee. Buy yourself a coffee. Um, actually, I'd, I, what would I what would I buy? What would be what would be? amaretta i might have a bit of amaretta or i might have uh definitely not a rum and coke because i can't have caffeine uh gin and tonic possibly i quite like a bit of that i might have go <laughs> no it's not a patreon it's not going to be about behind a wall it's in the phoenix group it's going on youtube soak it up just the only thing that we'd say is save up save up save up and get on the challenge and and a lot of people have asked if we can do it in 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 um like um paying installments and there's no point because in, you you wouldn't be able to get on the challenge until you'd paid it all up anyway so you might as well just save it up put it aside put it aside until you're ready to go and you then as soon as you've got enough for the 15 day you can start and then start saving up for the 10. okay uh mm. Mm, somebody was listening the other day. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no more trans. No, we're not having any of that. No, no transferring cash. No. Uh, you sent the user picture with the difference between not. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, she did. Bless her. Well, maybe we'll look at it tomorrow. Ramona, thank you, my darling. You're amazing. Thank you so much. You lot are too. You are because you're going to help us save the world. That sounds incredible. It's like, honestly, doesn't it? Doesn't it feel exciting? This is the last thing I'm going to say on this. Doesn't it feel exciting that you are That's right brilliant. on the pioneering edge of changing the entire equine world? That is incredible. Yes. Phoenix Warriors. Okay. Thank you so much. Learning loads. Tell you what you can do if you want to. Instead of giving us cash, just tell more people to join the group. Share it. Share stuff. Ow. I hurt my finger then. Just share stuff. That's what we'd like you to do. Get more people involved because with more people, it's a crusade. Phoenix Warriors. Okay, my lovelies. We're off. Like a bad smell. See you again soon. Can I just add one thing? I'm waiting for it to go to one hour, 32 minutes. There you oh. go. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Stop yeah. it. Oh. Oh. Oh.